Shaker, a lot of news for Marcus during Mobile World Congress. I was hoping you could maybe take us through some of the highlights and then we can maybe look at the theme that ties them all together. Oh, absolutely, Sean. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. So, super exciting show. We announced, uh, first of all, that we've actually just launched a new switch called the TGAX, along with NVIDIA. Uh, this is intended for edge audiences, particularly for telcos, trying to put monetizable services into the edge. They can take the TGAX, and then from that, they can launch AI as a service. They can get AI ORAN on top of that infrastructure, and then also launch a number of monetizable network services, like uh, connectivity services, VPNs, multi-cloud networking. So this is actually going to be a pretty phenomenal thing for uh, telecom operators. Uh, the second thing we announced is uh, a Broadcom Tomahawk 5-based infrastructure for AI that we have now stood up for Octopio. Uh, Octopio is a network provider uh, out from the Western United States. They serve a lot of uh, customers in Japan. Uh, and once again, uh, with the help of Ufi Space, our uh, hardware partner, this is a uh, solution that enables uh, companies like Octopio to just go out and build out AI ecosystems using Ethernet networking uh, from Arcus. Uh, and then uh, Liberty Global, we announced that uh, they have now shown a demo, in fact, they're showing that in their booth in Hall 8, as well as here, uh, where they have used Arcus along with uh, Fujitsu RAN, uh, and then partners like uh, Evident and Philips to show volumetric video applications running on top of this infrastructure. Uh, and then today, uh, Lanner, our partner, is actually going to announce a compute platform uh, with a DPU-based card that is running ArcOS that is going to enable operators to run AI on top of their compute platform. Okay, so a lot to unpack there, but uh, big picture from the network provider perspective, you have a lot of opportunity with AI, both for generating internal efficiencies and for standing up new monetizable services that make use of that AI capability. If you're an operator, where do you prioritize? Do you look uh, inward and try to see what you can do to improve your own operations, or do you go for new services first? I mean, you would obviously do both, but I think the reality of new services is actually very real and uh, stark right now, so I would take that opportunity to dive in head first and not really sort of, uh, uh, I mean, too often operators will think too hard before they actually create and launch a service. I think this time around, they should in fact move faster. Uh, so as an example, I think the whole idea that uh, AI can actually generate services uh, which are both network oriented as well as application oriented that build on top of intelligent infrastructure like what Arcus can bring to the table uh, is here and now. Uh, so I would go in and say, look, uh, if you were to go uh, and start building business oriented service, Particularly a lot of operators, whether they are tier one operators or two or three, they're all struggling to see how to monetize 5G to the business, and then now they're talking about 6G. So the best way to do that is create a programmable network infrastructure like what Arcus is doing for customers, and then use that to uh, create services that can be launched over a period of two, three weeks, rather than over a period of several months or even years. Uh, and whether that is uh, intelligent video applications, smart cities, uh, things that have been talked about for a long time but now are becoming real, uh, or just kind of gaming applications as uh, uh, Liberty Global is demonstrating. These are all things that operators should just jump on now. Otherwise, I think they will kind of be back into where they were with the cloud, which is like a decade after trying to like look back and say, okay, why did we miss that wave? So the real estate that operators have, as well as the network architecture that they have for connectivity, they should leverage that and go and build out infrastructure for edge AI. Inferencing, I mean, everybody talks about inferencing, but really the operators have an edge, uh, I mean, no pun intended, on inferencing, where they can actually just go in and build out this uh, inferencing capability for businesses to start leveraging and that can be an immediately monetizable opportunity. So I think the time is now, they should act. And regardless of, of which opportunity or opportunities they choose to pursue, they need that lossless network fabric that ties together all of their exactly. distributed compute, right? Exactly, and so far I think Ethernet kind of people said, oh, is it actually going to do this 
in a low latency manner? Is it going to give us the cap capability, capacity, the port speeds? And the answer is yes. I mean, we've demonstrated it. The UEC is a consortium that's actually driving this pretty heavily and we are participating in that. Uh, and frankly, not just us, but our competitors like Cisco and Juniper and Arista, everybody is jumping in into this and saying, look, Ethernet is real, it's going to happen. Uh, and even with uh, our partner, NVIDIA Broadcom, we're showcasing how this can be done in a credible, robust, and real manner. So I think that's where I think the opportunity is for operators to say, look, we've got a good part of the infrastructure, there's a bit of other stuff that are gaps, which again, if anyone in the operator community doesn't know how to do it, please come to us, we'll tell you how. Uh, but that 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 is exactly right. That, that's happening now. So. And then you know one other question, Shaker. As I've watched Arcus uh, grow and and gain more customers, I, I noticed that you all seem very focused on developing an ecosystem around you. I think that's a, a important lesson that telecom industry learned during Open RAN, and I think it's going to be just absolutely foundational for yes. AI to be successful. But yes. how do you think about your ecosystem strategy? Yeah, so first of all, I would say in the uh, semiconductor space, we are making sure that our operating system is interoperable and works on a diverse landscape. So whether that is uh, NVIDIA or Broadcom, or for that matter, Intel or uh, AMD uh, or ARM processors, we want to ensure that anybody that is actually going to a disaggregated infrastructure truly has the benefit of that disaggregated infrastructure. Then when you look at the kind of the box ecosystem, the white box vendors, we are working with a diversity of these white box vendors. I mean, notably companies like Ufi Space, Edgecore, Acton, and others, where customers can then have a choice of what they want, who they want to procure it from, how they pull these pieces together. But then at the same time, should we have a customer that says, look, I really don't want this headache, I want somebody to kind of come and put it together, we'll do that for them or we'll point them to SI partners of ours like um, uh, Fujitsu or Hitachi or companies like that, that will pull this together for them. So I think the opportunity is now there for them to go in and actually start making this real. Another thing I wanted to point out is, uh, we've been working with SoftBank pretty closely on this technology called SRV6 for the mobile user plane. Uh, it's now as we have kind of uh, demonstrated through multiple um, uh, news items in the past, it's real, it's actually getting into deployment, and we are in the process of building a consortium, a consortium around that. And so once again, as and when people are excited about that, they should talk to us. We will be happy to pull that uh, them into that because we believe that these technologies need to be adopted by everyone and we would encourage us, our competitors, our partners and our customers to all jump in this together so that we can drive the industry forward faster. Excellent. Well, it's been a great growth story from Arcus, and I appreciate you sharing the latest with our audience. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. It was wonderful uh, talking to you as always.